All right, so this is part two of section 3.2. And so what I want to do um, at here is just to, um, <clears throat> to uh, illustrate what, uh, what, what if you can, if you have clearly understood this whole idea of the derivative, right? What I'm about to do could be quite confusing to some of you. Just be warned ahead of time, okay? So I have two functions here, x squared and x cubed, right? And these are sort of standard types of graphs. And uh, so what I want to, I want you to think about is to graph the derivative functions. Now we have already established uh, the derivative of x squared is uh, 2x and the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. So you could you sort of cheat and graph those things. But instead of doing that, I want you to focus on right, what the derivative is and then use that information to inform what the graph of the function, the derivative, derivative looks like. Okay, so for instance, um, remember the derivative represents uh, the slope of the tangent tangent line, right? So if I drew a little tangent, like tangent pieces, okay, um, it'll look like this. So think of this parabola as uh, consisting of a bunch of small segments, line segments, which approximate the curve, okay? I know that no part of this curve, by the way, is actually straight, okay? It's not flat at any point, but you can approximate um, each little part of the, the, the parabola with you know these uh, straight line segments, which I indicated, or I have just drawn in with uh, green uh, line segments, right? And so now we look at the derivatives, um, the slope of these segments. Now this one looks pretty pretty big, right? And then this looks, well, it's still positive. These are positive. At this point, the slope is zero. So M, if you think of the slope as zero, you know, that's, that's zero here, okay? And uh, let's say, um, <clears throat> well, let's see, the derivative is two X here, right? So if you th think of this as one and two, of course, that's not quite right, um, but you know, that's okay. Uh, so this is four and this is one and so on. Uh, this is not, the X and Y axes are not drawn to scale the same thing, right? But here, you know that the slope is going to be two, right? The slope is zero here. Uh, maybe I should write the slope in different color. Um, so let's see, I am going to use, what color should I use? Blue, right? So blue numbers represent the slope. The slope at this point is zero. The slope at one is actually two, right? So this, um, this little segment has a slope of two. At this, two times two is four, so the slope of this thing is four, okay? Um, what is the slope over here? That would be negative one times two, so it's negative two. Remember, over in this side, on the left-hand side, the slope is always going to be negative because the graph is going down. At this point here, uh, it's not here, but I mean, it's not quite on the graph. Maybe I should just kind of cheat here. Um, yeah, that's... All right, but anyway, the um, the slope here is like negative four because negative two times two is that, right? So if you are to graph the derivative as the function, we are talking about something that goes from four to zero and, and uh, then going down to negative. Remember, this is a straight line, right? So the graph is actually going to be like this. That's the derivative function. Does it make sense? Like it has nothing to do, it doesn't look anything like the original function, right? But this is the derivative according to our calculation. So if you are, remember the derivative is going to indicate the slope of the tangent line or the tangent segment at these points. And so that is the derivative function drawn on the same plane as the original function. All right. So that's the, the function 2x, right? All right, x cubed. x cubed, you know the derivative. We calculated this previously and that's 3x squared. Um, well, let's see what happens here. Uh, as I did before, I can just you know do this and um, use these line segments 
which are going to represent or approximate the um, nice beautiful curve of x cubed. All right, let's draw or write in the slopes slope here. Okay, so maybe I can call this one up. Oh, uh, one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. All right, so at this point, three times three squared is 27. So at this point, the slope is 27. At this point, three times two squared is 12, okay? And one times one times three is three. So the slope is always positive. Okay, and then of course it becomes zero because three times zero squared is zero. Now what's three times negative one squared? That's three times positive one. So the uh, slope is going to be three at this point. Okay, and three times negative two quantity squared is again 12. Notice here, the slope is always, almost always positive. Even on this side, the slope is positive, just like this side. And the only time the slope is not positive is right at the origin, right? So this is the only part where the slope, the derivative is zero. At all other points, the derivative will be positive. So if you graph this, you actually get something that looks, well, let's see, the scale, don't worry about the scale, but what you will get is a parabola like this. And it's gonna be really, really big because at this point, you know, this value of this should be 27, right? At three and negative three. So that's the derivative function. Again, it looks very different from the original function and it could be quite confusing. Um, and it's a challenging question to graph the derivative function on top of the original function. Uh, but um, or just be aware that this is hard. <laughs> Okay, and uh, we'll come back and revisit these kinds of questions. All right, now we need to talk about a little theoretical um, questions. And one of the questions we will see is when, it, when does the derivative, when does the derivative not exist? Okay, and so remember the derivative is the limit, right? So the limit of the difference quotient so sometimes it may not exist. Question, when does it not exist, All right? So here is a good example. Fx is the absolute value of x, okay? Do you know what the graph of this looks like? Like this, right? So this part is, you know, uh, f is, uh, it's x, this side. And then this side, f is negative x. And there's a sharp corner right here, right? Now over here, of course, the slope is always negative one. And over here, the slope is always positive one, okay? So the, the, the derivative does exist at almost every point. So if you are to draw the, the slope, uh, let's see, uh, what can I do here? So this is f, f prime. Think about this, for every, negative value of x for every negative value of x the derivative is going to be the slope of the 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 line is negative one right so it's going to be constantly negative one and for every positive number this function the absolute function is exactly the same as y is equal to x the derivative is just one so it's going to be a constant one this is the derivative function for uh, well, for the absolute value function, right? Well, it looks like it exists. My question was, when does the derivative not exist? And here's the answer. The derivative of this function does exist at every single point, except at zero, right? Something happens right at this point where the limit does not exist. Can you see why the limit at zero does not exist for this derivative? Of course, right? Because there's this huge gap at zero. The limit has to be equal, both approaching from the right and approaching from the left. And clearly there is a difference between negative one and one. So the um, what's the correct statement to make here? The absolute value function has no derivative at 
x is equal to zero. Right? The other points, at other all other points, the derivative does exist, either negative one for negative x or positive one for positive x. Okay, but um, so f prime of zero does not exist, just like the limit, or because the limit does not exist. So keep that in mind. So now you can tell that the sharp corner is a bad thing. Okay, so a sharp corner is not where the function has its derivative. Where else could, or uh, how else could uh, the derivative fail to exist? So here uh, is a little note. Um, F prime of X does not exist if, okay, ready for this? F has a sharp point, just like what we had before. Okay, so that is illustrated by this example of the absolute value function. F has a hole. Okay, now imagine if you have a function like this. Okay. What's the derivative at this point here? Well, there is no tangent line, right? Uh, even if it's just a curve or something like this. Okay, if you have a hole, uh, you can't see the derivative has to do with this, right? If this is not defined, of course you can find the limit, which means the derivative does not exist. So the whole is a bad thing to have. If you have a gap, okay, that's also a problem. Now you could say, well, you know, there is a point, so fx does exist, but remember the, um, this limit has to exist. So if you have a jump, that's not a good thing. A jump could be also called a gap, and then if F has um, vertical asymptote. Now this reminds you of something, right? All of these have to do with discontinuity. And so these have to do with discontinuity. And in fact, these are the only types of discontinuity um, there are. So basically that what we are saying is if the function is discontinuous, okay, then the derivative does not exist at those points of discontinuity. However, just because the function is continuous does not mean the derivative exists. And here is the example of it, right? This part, I mean, the function is this, uh, the absolute value function is continuous at zero. There is no gap, no hole. It's just a sharp corner. So uh, not only does the function have to be continuous, but it could also uh, not have a sharp corner. All right, so here's the uh, very important theorem about the differentiability. Okay, so if the derivative function exists, then f must be continuous. I should say a little more carefully, if the uh, derivative exists at A, then it has to be continuous at A, all right? And so maybe that is a, a better and more accurate way to express this, all right? Uh, because, you know, it really, I mean, this continuity has to do with a point, right? And also uh, this is oftentimes um, paraphrased or restated by saying, Oh, I didn't tell you something important. Okay, so um, I should also give you a word. Here's the definition. If the uh, derivative exists, we say F is differentiable. Okay, so if you can differentiate uh, a function, all right, uh, remember what I, what I said about the word differentiate? Okay. Finding the derivative, that act of finding the derivative is called differentiation. So if you can differentiate a function, that function is differentiable. If you cannot find the derivative, such as in the absolute value function at zero, then the function is not differentiable at zero. Okay, so the word differentiability or differentiable means being able to find the derivative of f. All right, so uh, this theorem can be paraphrased by saying differentiability 
differentiability implies continuity. So if you, you know, go in, approach anybody who has uh, studied calculus and has, has knows what he's talking, he or she is talking about, um, if you say differentiability implies continuity, that would make perfect sense to that person. So, oh yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, okay? But you have to make sure you don't go the other way around because the converse is not true. You cannot say continuity implies differentiability, right? as we saw in this case of the uh, absolute value sign. Continuity does not necessarily uh, imply differentiability. So keep that in mind. All right, so um, here's another um, little thing that I should mention, we'll note. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Fx is equal to x, cubed, which is the cube root of x. Okay. Now, um, think about what happens with this function. And uh, this is the inverse of the cubing function. So the graph will go like this. All right, um, this is continuous everywhere. Continuous at all x. And that's from negative infinity to positive infinity. Right, no problem here. It is continuous. There's no gap or hole or anything, All right? And it's uh, no sharp corner. And okay, it's continuous everywhere, no sharp corners. So it looks like, you know, basically it's smooth everywhere, right? Um, there is no, no sharp point, uh, it's continuous. So that looks good. Is it differentiable? And it turns out not at the origin. Okay, um, we didn't do this one, but it turns out the derivative is going to be, and you don't know this yet, but it's it's this function. Uh, this is one over three times the uh, cube root of x squared. That's what the x to the two thirds power means. And the negative means it's appearing in the denominator, right? So what happens is as x approaches zero from positive or negative, and you can almost see this, you know, like I said, little tiles here, these little uh, tangent pieces, um, the left and right hand side will look exactly the same because this is an even function. And what happens is the, um, just like the square root function, as x approaches zero from both directions, the um, derivative gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The derivative exists, exists everywhere except at this point, zero. Because what happens is it approaches and uh, becomes infinitely large at x is equal to zero. Okay? And you can see that from this equation, if x is zero, this whole thing is undefined. And as x approaches zero, this gets bigger and bigger to positive infinity. Um, positive infinity is not a number, as I said before. And so we say this function is not differentiable at zero, even though it's smooth and no sharp corner and it's continuous everywhere. So again, what did I say? Differentiability guarantees, it, is, it implies continuity, but not the other way around. Just because the function is continuous, it does not mean it is differentiable. Okay, I have one more thing to say before we close section two. Let's get going on that one. So the last thing I should mention very quickly in just a couple of minutes is this higher order derivatives. What in the world are these? Okay. These are, we will we'll spend a lot of time on these later, but basically you can take the derivative of the derivative because here's a function, right? Uh, if you take the derivative, 
which you can write as ddx that remember this is the constru construction the, the the command or the instruction uh it's called technically called the differential differential operator take the derivative of and if you do that you get the first derivative what what we have been calling the derivative if you do it again then you get the second derivative and if you do it again you get the third derivative and so on all right so this is uh the second derivative and it actually does have a meaningful interpretation if this represents the rate of the instantaneous rate of change this will be the instantaneous rate of change of that instantaneous rate of change, right? If this is the position function or the, um, the mileage function, the distance function, this would be the velocity, how fast it's going. That's the rate of change, right? As we know as speed or velocity. This one would be, the second derivative would be the rate at which the velocity is changing, the instantaneous change of the velocity. We have a good name for this. This is called the acceleration, right? And theoretically, you can just keep on doing this, okay? So um, you, I have just used this notation. And by the way, if you do this n times, you don't want to have, like, let's say the, the 15th derivative. You do not want to have 15 primes, like, you know, this one, two, three, four, five, six. That's really, really hard to, to read. So eventually, you would be using this number n in parentheses to indicate the nth derivative. All right, what's strange about this? Uh, I mean, it's not really essentially strange, but what's strange is the way that people have decided to denote these things. Remember, f prime can be written as dy dx because you perform this differential operator on y, right? So you take y and you do ddx, which is to say, take the derivative of, right? So the second derivative is the derivative of the derivative of dy dx. So strangely enough, they have decided to write this as d squared y. You see that d dy, okay? Sounds like dance, dance revolution. Uh, that's different. And, and then you have dx, dx. So you write this as dx squared. So this is the official uh, notation for the second derivative. The third derivative is similar. It's d cubed y over dx cubed, okay? Um, you may think, man, I hate this, right? Okay, that's fine, because I used to have the same feeling. And to this day, I still feel like this is um, not very pretty, but that's okay. Uh, this is how you write these higher order derivatives, okay? So we'll have much more to say about higher order derivatives later. Um, maybe not much in calculus one, but you will be seeing these higher order derivatives in many uh, more math classes to come. So keep this in mind, all right? And so that's it for section 3.2. I will see you later.